Senator John Sabini. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, Chancellor Klein, Ms. Grimm. Um, in my history in government relating to education is a, a varied one. When I was on the city council, we had uh, an education committee that didn't meet because the chairman said since the Board of Education wasn't responsible to the oversight of the city council, why bother? We had a chancellor at one time, Chancellor Fernandez, who refused to answer questions at a budget hearing I attended because he said he wasn't responsible to the city council since we didn't provide him any money. Um, and he wasn't a commissioner. So I favored mayoral control of education because I thought, especially under this mayor, who I think is uh, uh, an exemplary public official, that uh, it was a good thing. And I still think it may be a good thing, uh, but I don't see any increase in accountability um, because uh, we still don't seem to get all the information we ask for, the questions we need answered, answered. Um, and I, like Assemblyman Lafayette, have tried to have a meeting uh, with uh, you since uh, the day you took office, and I have been told I can't have one. So I'm glad to hear you meeting with some people. Uh, and I look forward to the fact that someday you'll meet with us before you leave office. Um, with regard to the bus situation, since there is money involved in the state, because we provide a lot of money for pupil transportation, and you changed the way buses were uh, allocated to people, uh, you're aware that uh, my colleagues and I have sent you a letter regarding some information on that. I understand that the goal here was to move money into the classroom, and I think that's a noble goal, but I think in the, in the details of it, and you've even admitted, some of the things sort of got a little bollocked up. Um, what, what is the thought process when parents are not responding to these inquiries you had about people transportation? because it seemed to me that when you saw that there was a large gap in the answer number, the percentage of respondents, that there may have been a problem and that other means were necessary. Why, why, why did you decide to move forward when I'm told, uh, I believe the number was 63% citywide answered? We didn't move forward then. In fact, we delayed it three times by right. state law you're required to register for bus service. That's a state law requirement. Right. We started this process approximately six, seven months ago, and we kept extending it and extending it, and one of the conclusions we came, which we were not wrong about, is a significant number of people, five, 6,000 people who were routed for the buses were never riding them. Uh, other people either decided for whatever reason, despite multiple outreach efforts, not to sign up, and we had to address that issue. Or maybe they didn't understand the questionnaire, or maybe in a district like mine, the parent is not the person who has the contact with the student when they come home from school. I mean, the system of sending notices home in backpacks is a little specious, in my opinion. We, we, I know you eventually sent mail only because that first system didn't work. And we also called people center. Right. Uh, I, I, I got to tell you that people in a district like mine, a largely immigrant population, who are the people who are the consumers of public education, often work two jobs, I don't have to tell you this, often it's the grandparent or the aunt or the uncle who's the one who has the contact with the child coming to and from the bus. Um, and I just don't feel that we, despite many uh, attempts to get answers that we, we've gotten. How, how many children were issued Metro cards in the city? Uh, appro approximately 15,000 were issued during this thing because they requested them, which right. was again a fact. The, either they're traveling with their parents or they prefer public education. What, there were a number of children who were issued Metro cards because they were told they were, that, the, that it would be inefficient for them to get a bus service? And some, sometimes that happened and sometimes we granted variants. How many children were told that? Again, I, I can get you, I don't think we have an exact number. Do you know the ages of the children who were told that? Uh, I've been, I've been public clear about this. Some children who were too young were told that and that was our error. I mean, sometimes, you know, We'll have good luck, and sometimes we have bad luck. I mean, this story tended to be in the media the day after there was a front page story in one of our daily newspapers in New York City talking about sexual predators living near schools, and then the next day it's, oh, by the way, put your kid on the bus to get to school. It, it didn't sit too well with, the, um, with, with some of our parents. Do you know how many um, 
parents, uh, I'm sorry, how, how much money you've actually saved on this initiative because you've had to actually add bus runs now to emergency runs and issue Metro cards and hire, I'm told, staffers to answer the phone. Has there been a savings yet? Sure there have, and it's money for the classroom, and, and, and as you said at the outset, that's important. We've been running a lot of buses that had relatively few kids on there. We knew our average capacity was low. That's inefficient. Dollars I spent on busing, I should be where I can spend them on a classroom to meet all the other needs that you and your colleagues have raised seemed to me to be the right thing. In the execution, it was not handled properly, and I take responsibility for that. But overall, we estimate we'll save $10 million a year, which will go to our schools for things like books and teachers, which is where it belongs. Right. So do you and have if to I can save a million dollars, I'll save it. Okay, do you have to, well, I mean, we can, we can have significant disagreements over whether or not a million dollars is worth, you know, upsetting the semester for a, thousands of children too, and you know, that's a discussion for another day. I think we're on the same goal, we want to put money in the classroom. Uh, is, is some of the money the savings that you have going to be, re is, is some of that required to be refunded to the state under uh, tra people transportation aid? It, it won't be f up through this year. I don't know what will happen going forward and how, because the, the formula up to this year was based on shares, and so right. th that's a difference. How many children no longer get school breakfast because of this school bus change? I, I don't have numbers, but I haven't heard complaints, and I've heard no, we, we have. And in addition, you know, there are there are, admittedly anecdotal because I don't have control of the school system like you do, so I have less numbers than you, uh, and apparently we don't have too many today. But how many children have been uh, forced to miss class? How many children have been forced to be have their school day uh, at, or their time at home for homework, play, or whatever else we want kids to do after they leave school, that in, in the case of not only public but also parochial school has been forced to sit in an auditorium to wait to be picked up because of this policy. That's been a cost as well, not to you in dollars, but to them and their parents and the time of their parents. And um, you know, we, we, we want to make sure that uh, children's uh, day, when it's supposed to end, they at home, and that hasn't always happened. I have a situation in Transfiguration Church in Corona where kids were sat, sitting there for an hour after school for uh, over a week. Mm -hmm. uh, and to me, that's not, you know, I mean, this is a little penny wise and pound foolish. I, I, I want to um, just assure you that we want you to put money in the classroom, but at the same time, you know, the, the well being of the children. Uh, the angst of the parents and their gar and their children's guardians is part of the calculus. And while it's great to save money and to have folks come in from out of town and tell you how to build a better mousetrap, and that can happen sometimes. I've been around and seen it happen. But a lot of times uh, they work in a more homogenous environment than New York is. You know, we are uh, a rather unique place. And um, I hope, and judging from some of the public statements I've seen, uh, that you will sort of think twice before we make these broad decisions like this. My last question is, I mean, do, do you now know how many uh, bus routes are being eliminated? I think the answer is 99. Right, and why is it that you can't tell people where those are so parents can have a better idea of what the situation is? Oh, we can, yeah, we can well, we've you. repeatedly asked your office for this, and we've been told for national security reasons we can't give it out, and for the sake of the children, it's like, gee, if you were so worried about the kids, you wouldn't be putting them on a subway. Well, we're not, we're not going to, we'll give you where the routes are, we're not, and we'll get you the information. We're not asking you for the kids' names or the right, bus drivers' right, right, names, right. we're asking you for the routes. Okay, well, we'd like to have that, because uh, repeatedly attempts, uh, repeated attempts to get that from uh, uh, your department have been turned away in a... Um, uh, in a way that was reminiscent of the old Board of Education. And since we want to make sure we don't go back to the old Board of Education, we'd like to have the accountability we all seek. So thank you, Mr. Chairman.